Welcome guys, so this is going to be a big one. We're going to give our top tips for how to do the challenge run. We've finished top 10% about 10 weeks in a row now. Most of those weeks have been the top three. And I'm going to let you know what I think are the biggest tips to help you get in the top 10%. So really quick rundown of what the challenge runs are. So once you've completed some of the normal runs and you've defeated some of the bosses, you'll get rewarded these challenge keys. And this allows you to go into this mode here, so challenge and you can compete for a spot on the leaderboard. If you get in the top 10%, you'll get these rewards and later on for release, this will likely be the avenue they'll give NFT rewards or play to earn rewards, such as Gala tokens. All right, let's get stuck in. So tip number one is knowing how much score you get for a kill versus how much score you get for completing a room faster. So we've broken down the algorithm that they use and the scoring system you can think of as 50 points per kill and 60 points per 10 seconds quicker you do the run for each room. So the idea here is if it takes you more than about 8, eight to 10 seconds to get a kill, it's probably not worth it. So how this works practically, if we look at this example here, I'm killing these in invaders and sometimes these invaders will take you know too long. In this case I decide it's worth killing them. But I see the heartburn on the side there on the left and that's going to take me more than eight seconds to kill. So I ignore the heartburn and I decide to just finish the run and get the extra points for going through quicker. Now what I have found is that as a general rule it's almost always better to just go for the kills. It's only in those small situational examples like without heartburn, maybe the invaders if you're not very good at shooting or you're playing Ronin and you don't have a good gun, and also the heal bots sometimes it's worth just skipping those. So another example is if you feel like you've missed a few mobs, but instead of going and searching for them and clearing everything, you might decide that I'll save the run by just going through quicker rather than risking trying to search for them, potentially not finding them, wasting 10 to 20 seconds and not getting those points at all. Most of the time, go for the kills, but keep in mind that if a kill takes more than eight seconds, it's probably not worth it. Okay, so tip number two and three, we're going to group together. So these tips are get good at grouping mobs together and killing them efficiently and also making sure you kill the exploders. So if you weren't aware, you don't get a kill credit for an exploder that you don't reduce to zero yourself. So the exploders explode on proximity or when they die. So if they're exploding on proximity, it's not going to count. So you will have to reduce the health to zero yourself. And they also can kill enemy mobs around them, which also won't count towards your kills. So you've got to trigger both those kills. So you can see here I'm grouping up these mobs here by triggering them to follow with my gun. So the proximity of those bullets will cause them to, to follow. They might follow anyway, but I like to just shoot uh, regardless. And then I'm moving forward while those mobs follow to kill these exploders. So you can see here I'm having to take the damage of the exploders as I'm playing Ronin this is always the case I just do my empowered melee attack and usually that kills them sometimes you have to do a regular melee attack afterwards or just spam your melee attack and you just have to cop that damage it can be good to kill them away from the other mobs so that they don't kill their own mobs um, but a lot of the time you will just have to do your best stand in the middle of them do your empowered attacks or empowered dashes and try claim as many of those kills as possible so you can see I move forward to claim those exploder kills while the rest of those creatures or mobs follow me and group up and I'm able to kill them much more efficiently. So you can see another example here as I kill these pustules. They spawn a, a group of exploders plus other mobs and I'm just having to stand in the middle of them, do my powered attacks and claim as many kills as possible. Now if you're playing Nomad or Murma, you might have a different strategy with this. You might be able to snipe out the mobs around the exploders before you kill the exploders. Um, you'll, but either way, you'll need to get really good at this mechanic and claiming as many of these kills as possible as efficiently as possible. Whether this using your, whether it's using your overdrive or doing the method that I'm doing, where I'm using my powered attacks to just stand in the middle of them. Now this will cause you to obviously die a lot more, but these are the risks you're going to have to take in order to get those top 10% runs. 
So tip number four, this is just a suggestion and what I do, but I would suggest on your first run of the week, noting down how many kills you get per room. So clearing everything, not worrying about time, just getting a, a good idea of how many mobs you should be at at each room. And then on the second run, I usually go through faster and I'll get a rough time of how long that'll take to clear that room. And then from then on, on the third, fourth and so on run, you'll have a good idea of if you're slightly ahead and even if you've missed a few mobs. So sometimes towards the end of a room, if you see that you're already on basically the max amount of kills you can get for that, there's no need to turn around and kind of look around. You can just sprint towards the end. So it can come in handy quite a lot. It also gives you confidence as you're doing it, if you're ahead of your, your previous timer or whether you're so far behind that you might just scrap the run and test a few things out instead of going for a high score. Okay, so this next tip is in regards to the talent trees. So I'm obviously a Ronin main, so with Ronin, if you're only level 30, which will be enough to get in the top 10%, you don't need to be level 39 like I am, but I would suggest grabbing everything here. So you get this increased melee damage with overshield and 50% less damage with overshield. So this will allow you to tank a lot of those exploders like we discussed earlier. You then want to get all the way to Blade Master, so this top talent tree. This will give you a melee buff as you take damage from overshield, so you can get up to 150% melee buff. Now this goes away if you shoot your gun, but this is very important for runs that have wind up on it. It's going to help you kill other mobs, but specifically with runs with wind up, this will allow you to either one or two shot wind up and it'll cut down you know 30 plus seconds of that time which is a, a lot now i found level 39 is probably the sweet spot for ronin uh, you really don't even need 39 i don't need anything from here but this is just a bit of quality of life stuff so you get a few more extra credits here which can help and your overdrive charges faster so this won't necessarily allow you getting to get more higher scores it'll just allow you to maybe not die as much. Now I spoke to Oni, who's the top Nomad player, and he goes this top path as well. And then same with Murma, I spoke to Chaos, who's the top Murma player, and he also goes this top path. And that'd be around level 30. Obviously, when they're higher level, they sometimes change up these two paths. And again, that'll empower you quite a bit more on Nomad and Murma. Not so much with Ronin is not as important, but with Nomad and Murma, getting these infamy levels is going to help you a lot more. All right, this next one is super important and it's a difficult one to master, but it will make or break your run a lot of the times. So the tip is get really good at killing brute force. And this applies to other bosses, but brute force is one of the ones that most commonly comes up. And he also has a lot of extra mobs that you, you can kill and a lot of exploders. So not only do you need to kill them quick, but you also need to rack up as many kills as you can during the boss fight. So I'll run you through a fairly clean run here. There are a lot of variables, such as what gun you have, what powers you have, but you should get a pretty good idea of what I'm trying to achieve uh, by watching this run. So I start up, up the top here because the missiles will just hit the front structure in front of me and I won't have to kill them. And you're just trying to get as many headshots as you can. I prefer auto weapons, ideally having two auto weapons and the holsters refill when you change weapons so when I can swap weapons and my other auto my machine gun will be reloading I don't think I have it in this run but that would be ideal and then I really like the shock ability so hopefully you'll pick up shock empowered boosters throughout the run and your shock abilities will be doing a lot of damage so you can see there I pop overdrive and I'm able to trigger into the next phase and the shock abilities also allow me to clean up the mobs and trigger those exploder kills quite efficiently. Now this looks quite clean and this is my ideal setup for this boss. You're not always going to get this, sometimes you'll have Xeno um, and other abilities, but you're just going to have to do your best. Sometimes it might be a bit slower to clean up these exploders. So this is in the third, run now, uh, third round now and those exploders will just trickle in. So try and get damage on the boss while killing those exploders. So you want to roughly kill him at the same time those exploders stop spawning. So that's generally how I like to do it on Ronan. Sometimes I'll just be shooting him from a distance if I can't 
if I don't have that overdrive ability that I can kill him in close combat quickly, I'll just shoot him from a distance while grouping up all the additional mobs and once I've gotten his health down I'll clean them up with clean them up with either dash or empowered little melee attacks and I'll do it that way. But in this case I was able to use my overdrive pretty efficiently to kill him. Now on Nomad it's going to be different again, your crits are going to be doing a lot more. You'll probably rely on your overdrive to clean up the mobs I imagine and same with Murmur. You'll be able to, you know, there'll be a different technique but the tip remains the same. Get really good at efficiently killing him and the mobs at a similar rate. Alright, the final two tips are ideally get Xeno Dash or Shocking Dash. If you've noticed throughout this tips already, most of the time I either have Shocking or Shock Dash, which is my favourite. It's a little bit less fast than Xenos, but it has a lot more survivability because you're stun locking a lot of the mobs. You can kind of kill them with your dash a lot more efficiently. So it's just preferable for me, but Xenos is definitely faster and the secondary powers you'll get with that often come with increased healing and a lot more survivability in that regard. If you get stuck with Fire Dash or Ice Dash, they, they both still work. Don't give up on the run, but I found they're probably not as good. Now you can use the reroll snacks that you get um, at the start of the run to get your ideal powers or if you get no dash at all you could use those rerolls so you don't lose a challenge key. But this brings me to my final tip which is don't give up on the run and play a lot. So if a run doesn't feel that good sometimes you know you end up getting a much higher score than what you think or your first few rooms might not be that efficient but you end up doing you know optimizing some of the later rounds or the bosses that make up for the run. I mean no run's going to be perfect so keep doing the run and you do get a challenge key at the end of the run if you complete it so completing it won't uh, waste a challenge key and you also just might be surprised at what score you actually get. Also play it, yeah so like I said play a lot. You might get a bit disheartened that you're not scoring that high or you know you keep dying or whatever but a lot of us guys at the top you know anywhere between 5 and 20 runs per week kind of thing so some weeks you'll get a really good score in your first couple of runs and that's sweet. Um, other times it'll take a long time and a lot of deaths. And there's really no substitute. You know, I can give you all these tips, but as you play more, you'll innately kind of get an understanding of where the mobs are, how quickly you can go through, um, when it's better to go fast or start killing the mobs, or when you want to skip mobs. Alright, if you found that helpful guys, make sure to like and subscribe and comment below if anything in particular helped or if you've got any other tips that I've missed. And yeah, subscribing will really help us out. So if you got anything out of that, hit the subscribe button and we will see you next time for more content on these Web3 games.